Okay, I've taken the uh, final temperature. I'm at 1600, which is really hot, um, skimmed. So I'm ready to, to light her off. Here it goes. Well, I uh, can't say that I was especially encouraged by that, but uh, only because the cup filled up and it just sat there and it didn't really seem to take any any metal. But the the problem is, is the part is so low a volume, I mean, probably 80, 90 percent of of the pour is in the sprue. So we'll see. We'll see what happens when we demold it. We might have something. We might have nothing. That's uh, that's how it rolls. We'll see what happens when we demold. All right, well, here comes the big reveal. We'll see what we've got, whether we've got a saucer cup and spoon or a fraction of a saucer cup and spoon. Well, initially, I'd say we've got a saucer, cup, and spoon, so uh, let me clean her off here. We've got this dip bucket right here. Let's see uh, how it looks.
So we'll let it cool for just a minute and I'll be back with you. Well, I'm back with you and uh, I think that we're going to have to call it a partial success. <laughs> so, got most of it, but uh, we'll take a little bit closer look at it uh, when I get it inside here. But you can see not quite, well, I guess probably cold shuts, you know, up there at the very end. Couldn't quite get in there. And then uh, right here around the perimeter of the plate didn't quite get out there so so close on just that edge and same thing on that edge but man oh so close I don't know what I'm going to do on this bigger one because if this one doesn't fill I'd say the chances of the big one completely filling are pretty slim but I think I'll up the temperature a little bit and slam the hand to it and see what it does don't know what else I'm going to do for it but uh, here, we'll take a closer look uh, after I get done with number two. So this is the vacuum rig. Um, I've got uh, two three-stage central vac vacuum motors there. One there, one there. And a couple speed controls for them so I can control the boost. And there's my vacuum gauge. But you can also run them in parallel or in series. And in series, you pipe the inlet to the outlet of the other, and that effectively makes it um, a six-stage um, uh, compressor or vacuum pump, if you will. And I can pull more than twice as much vacuum, um, almost up to 18 inches of mercury with them plumbed that way. Of course, if I plumb them in parallel, I can't achieve as high a vacuum, but I got twice the volume of flow. So that's basically all it is, is just two motors mounted on that cart with speed control. I've got little hose storage back here and cold sto or cord storage on it. Um, a little wheel cart that I can wheel around. But it's a good source of vacuum, and it's also a good source of air because it can develop a, a lot of pressure, you know, a number of PSI for what it is. So it's also a great uh, furnace blower because you can shove a lot of air through a pretty small pipe with it. But uh, anyhow, that's it, and I'll... Other than that, I'll just show you what the vacuum reading looks like on it. All right, so I got more vacuum, about uh, 13, 14 inches of mercury. So down near half an atmosphere. Um, and at the temperature, another 100 degrees to it's almost 1,700. So it's probably going to be the best chance I got. So here goes the larger one of the two.
<laughs> All right, well, that seemed to go about like the other one, so we'll uh, give her 10 minutes or so to, to freeze and go through the routine again. We'll rejoin in a couple minutes. Well, here's my cleanup procedure. It's called shovel it back in the bucket through the screen in the top. One thing about lost foam, you can treat your sand with just total disregard. All it needs to be is dry and it'll work just fine. So I won't get too particular about cleaning up the, the rest there because I got one more flask to dump. And hopefully, hopefully it'll be a full saucer cup and spoon, but we'll see. Okay, here goes demold number two of the second larger of the two uh, saucer cup and spoon so let's see what we got Well, it looks promising, but uh, so did the other one. <laughs> so let me see here. I'll, uh, I'll take her over to the dipping bucket and get all the refractory blown off of it, and we'll see what we've got. Well, <laughs> So, so close. It is all there except for the very bottom edge of the plate. Unbelievable. You know, I told myself that if I didn't make it with these two, I wasn't going to try a third time, but that's so darn close. I don't know if I can give in to it. I might have to try a third time because I think I can get it. <laughs> yeah, anyway, we'll take a little bit closer look at them when I get them inside. But yeah, anyway, it's... Uh, it's all there except what was the very bottom half inch of the mold. All right, well, we'll keep working on it. All right, let's take a little closer look at uh, what we've got here. I was a little surprised that I didn't get closer on this small one. You can see that that side of the cup right there towards the top is kind of a mess. And then the edges of the plate itself here uh, at what would have been uh, three and nine o'clock they didn't uh, quite fill either but interestingly just uh, the one down here at the bottom actually did and that's the farthest one probably from the sprue on that i'm really surprised that the uh, cup didn't fill um, right here but the spoon you can see um, the spoon filled completely. I mean, everything's just fine there. Of course, the handle and everything where it was gated into, that's fine. The bottom, you know, the bottom uh, and all of the features that don't really matter are, are perfect, you know, and sprue feeding it and whatnot. But this is the smaller of the two, and uh, I'm kind of surprised that the, this one didn't get closer. Of course, it was about uh, 1,600 degrees, and I poured the other one at 1,700, so the larger one was super, I just superheated the piss out of that. 
So uh, let's take a look at the, the larger one. The larger one actually came really, really close. The only place, and of course it was poured in this orientation here, and the very bottom is the only part that didn't fill. And uh, you can just tell it just froze. You can see the, uh, if you look very close there, it just ran out of heat. And, uh, you know, I think it's just uh, pretty safe to assume it just ran out of heat uh, with that real, real thin cross section because it's, uh, it's where you'd have the most head pressure for sure, but it's also the farthest point from um, the, the cup itself and uh, it's where I would expect it to freeze. But the uh, spoon, wow, you know, that stem on that spoon, I didn't think that that was going to fill and everything in the interior. And this cup is perfect. I mean, if you look at the cup, I mean, it looks like every single detail that was on the surface of that styrofoam cup is there. The, of course, the handle that I made is good. So it's just uh, the perimeter of this plate. And of course, the other thing that was different on, um, on this larger one is, is I actually had about uh, 13 inches of mercury vacuum, whereas on the other one, I only had seven. So I staged the pumps and I... I uh, I, I drew an extra five inches, so that was almost a half an atmosphere of vacuum that was pulling on this one, and uh, just about got there. And you know, I said that I wasn't going to um, waste my time, and if I didn't get it on these, I wasn't going to try again, but I'm a stubborn son of a bitch, and I am not going to quit, because I think I can get this thing. And uh, I've already got just a little different gating strategy here where I'll make a ring gate and I'll feed four corners of that ring gate, including the lower portion, and I bet I get it. So I'll, I'll do it just like I did this one, only I'll get metal from the hot sprue down here to the bottom um, of, of the pattern too, and uh, I bet I get it whipped when I do that. So we'll see. Um, I'll have to try round three. I will make one more pattern and give one more go at it.